And uh, if you brought a Bible, hold it up to the Lord. If you didn't bring a Bible, just hold your hand to God and repeat this after me. Ready? Guys, one, two, three, go. Thank you, Father, for the Bible. This is your word, and it's wonderful. And according to your word, I'm a faith walker, I'm a faith talker, and I'm a miracle worker. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit, and I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm a doer of your word, and everything I do is blessed. In the name of Jesus, for your glory. Amen, Lord. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. Y'all can have a seat. Well, that just feels good coming out of your mouth. You know, if somebody asks you sometimes, how are you doing? And you say, oh, I'm having a terrible day. You feel worse after you said that than you did before. But if they say, how are you doing? You say, oh, man, I'm blessed. You know, you suddenly feel blessed. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Okay, so we've been in a five-part series of messages called God Is. I've been really enjoying this series. I hope you are too. And I was waiting for an amen. I was hoping. I'll, I'll just come back in a while when y'all, because now I got my feelings hurt because nobody said amen. No, not really. I'm joking. I'm just joking. I've been really enjoying this, this series. The first week was, uh, was called God Is, you know, God the Father Is. And we talked about who He is. And, uh, now, by the way, all these messages, you can get them online. If people ask for the CD after service, but you know, you can go to www.friendship.church and every sermon, both in the audio and the video form, is there. Okay, before I forget, you can keep it in or don't keep it in. Immediately after service, Bob will be downstairs. I just saw you, Bob. And the early voting starts in two weeks or two days? Two days. Starts in two days, and so he's got information down there to help you uh, to decide. You, know, you can vote for who he wants you to vote for, or whatever. I'm just joking. But anyway, though, so that's what that's about. So we're talking about, uh, again, God is. Who is God the Father? Well, he's, he's real. He's eternal. He's invisible. He's immortal. He's amazing, right? We talked about all the attributes of God the first week. Second week, we talked about Jesus. We said, well, who's he? Well, he is the Son of God. He's co-equal with God. And so he's eternal, immortal, invisible. He's knowable. He's loving. All these kinds of things. The third week we talked about the Holy Spirit. Who's He? We said, well, He's wonderful. He's the third part of the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we said He's holy, He's pure, He's perfect, and He's good. And we said that He's spirit, He's invisible, He doesn't have the limitations of, of a fleshly body, and He can be everywhere at the same time, and He can come radically touch your life, because He's the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about angels and demons. I said, in over 40 years of preaching the Word of God, never have I given a message specifically about angels, but I did last week. And I got super excited about that, and I, I know a lot of you all did too. And if you didn't hear it, you should go back and hear that message. Angels are messengers of God. They're incredibly powerful. They're not little fat things with little bitty wings flying around, you know. They're not sitting on a cloud. The Bible talks about them and says they're mighty. They're armed. There's one time that one angel drew his sword, and there was a very wicked city. God sent him that angel to destroy that city. He drew his sword, and 70,000 people died. But, of course, the angels are sent to minister for us. And that was last week's message. And there, there, there are helpers, they strengthen us, that sort of thing. Well, today we're talking about who are you, the fifth message in the series. And so if you would, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And if you would, read it with me nice and loud. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. Now hold on to that one second. See where I underlined that new creation? If you've got a Bible, circle that. We're going to talk about that the rest of the day. The new creation has come. Okay, go on. It says, the old has gone, the new is here, and all this is from God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you now for the power of your word, the penetrating, life-giving power of the truth. And I pray the Holy Spirit come and guide us, Lord, into that truth. In the name of Jesus, for your glory, for the betterment of your people. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today we're finishing up this series and we're talking about who you are. Who you really are. Not the guy that you see in the mirror when you look in the mirror. What does God see when God looks in your mirror? He sees the face of his son. Because that's who you are to him. And not just who he considers you to be. That's who you are. That's what we're going to talk about today. Who are you really? Well, the Bible says that if you're in Christ... Meaning if you've given your heart to him. I had a guy after service say, man, pastor, I'm not sure that message made a lot of sense to me because I'm not really sure if I'm born again. 
So I said, well, do you know if you believe in Jesus? He said, oh, yes, I do. Well, have you ever just asked him to forgive you for your sins? Oh, yeah. Have you asked him to come live in your heart? You bet I did. I said, well, then you're born again. He said, well, I don't, I don't feel very born again. And I said, did you notice in the scriptures, it never tells us what it feels like to be born again. But we get this idea, if I'm born again, then I'm going to feel real lighthearted. Doesn't say that. So therefore, if I feel lighthearted, I must be born again. No, a lot of people feel light, lighthearted. They're not born again. If I feel worry-free, if I feel happy, I must be born again. No, no, no. A lot of people feel happy. They're not born again. But in 1 John chapter 5, it says, I've written to you who believe in Jesus so you might know you have eternal life. You see, you can believe something and have it before you even know you have it. Has anybody ever given you something and you say, oh, thank you so much. I mean, right now all you've got is a box with a bow on it, you know, and you're excited. Oh, it's a present. Thank you so much. You have no idea what's in it, but you're thankful just to have it. And then you open it up and you say, wow, this is great. It's, you know, whatever. It's a blender. It's a mixer. It's a, you know, seven-in-one Swiss Army knife or something. Wow, this is great. But you really don't know what it does yet. But you've got it. It's yours. But you don't know what it does. It's the same way with us in Jesus. It's the same way with us in God the Father. We can believe in Jesus Christ. These men in 1 John chapter 5, he said, you believe in Jesus, but you don't know you have eternal life. You don't know what you have. You see, a lot of you don't know who you are. You've been to church. You've been born again. Maybe you've been coming since you were a little kid. But you still don't know who you are, who you really are. When I was young, I was about 16, 17 years old. We went to Disneyland in California. I've been to Disney World, but I went to Disneyland where the little group that I was in, we sang, we did a show. In fact, we did five shows a day for two weeks. Seven, week, seven days a week, we did five shows a day in Disneyland. Well, when you go to Disneyland or Disney World, you know, and you get there, you look around and you go, wow, this is Disneyland or this is Disney World. I've been here. I've seen it. Now I know what it's all about. And so you go home and your friends say, oh, I'm going to go to Disney World. Oh, let me tell you all about it. I know all about it. But you don't know all about it. You just went there one time. So you go again, and all of a sudden you say, oh, I didn't realize there was this here. There was this kind of a store and that ride, and there was this land. I never got to that land last time. You see, that's how revelation works in the Lord, is as we continue in Christ, we gain fresh revelation. And so after two weeks solid of doing five shows a day out at Disneyland, I actually grew to almost despise Disneyland, because by then I knew every nook and cranny. I didn't just go see the mechanical hippopotami in the river jungle cruise. I could see the speakers back there in, in the woods, you know, and I knew where every fence was and the ends, and it didn't seem so magical anymore. Well, the way the world is, as you get more revelation of it, the magic kind of rubs off. People say the rose, you know, the shine is off the whatever, the rose is off. You know, it's not that way with God. The more you know about Him, you get a, a greater revelation, and you get more excited about Him. You fall more in love with him. And as you get a greater, a greater revelation of who you are, then all of a sudden you begin to stand up a little taller. You've got a little greater peace, a little stronger boldness, a greater confidence about where you're going in life because you know who you are. So who are you? Who are you? Today let's talk about who you are. If you're in Christ, the Bible says you're a new creation. In other words, you're an entirely new person, not an improved version of the old person. Something happened to you when you got born again that was entirely supernatural, and it was all of God and none of you. He says, if anybody's in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here, and all this is from God. You didn't just shine yourself up. You didn't just clean yourself up. You didn't just make yourself a little better or try a little bit harder. If you're in Christ, you're a new creation, something that never existed before. In fact, the Greek says that you are a kine ktisis. Ooh, that helps. What it says is you're a fresh creation. A fresh creation. And as I speak to you this morning... The revelation of what I just said is going to begin to sink into your mind and your heart. That you are a fresh creation. In other words, that Greek phrase specifically refers to the act of creation, not just the created thing. 
In other words, can I just skip right to the end of the message? You see, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve in his own image after his own likeness. Adam and Eve fell, and that God-like part of them on the inside died. Fast forward several thousand years, Jesus Christ comes along, and he says, if you believe in me, you will never die. Well, Adam died. All the patriarchs died. The judges died. The kings died. The prophets died. But Jesus said, if you believe in me, you'll never die. Why? Because, you see, you've been created anew, again, very much like the first creation, but very different from the first creation. Anybody that has great resources, if he replaces something that he has, and he says, you know, I'm, I've got this car, but I want to get a new car. Well, if the guy's got a billion dollars, he's not going to get a new car inferior to the old car. He's going to go get a better car. If he's got a house, he says, I just feel like I want a new house. He's going to get a better house. And so the Bible says we have a better covenant built on better promises, and it's a better reality. In other words, somebody looks back and says, well, you know, when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that was awesome because they were made in the image of God, and it's been downhill ever since. No, it's not, brother. It's better now than it ever was before. Because when... Adam sinned, what happened? The Bible says in the day that you sin, you're going to D-I-E. You're going to die. Son, when you sin, you're going to die. We know that Adam's body did not die. His physical body went on for years and years and years. But what happened? Something on the inside of him, the God-likeness in him died. But Jesus said, when you believe in me, you will never die. Why? Because in the beginning, there was, a new, there was a kind of a creation. There was a covenant established with Adam and with Eve. That was a covenant of just obedience and a covenant of relationship. But it wasn't a covenant of the indwelling of Christ himself. And so that God-likeness, it had the capability of death. And so when Adam sinned, the Bible says, on the day that you sin, you're going to die. And Adam sinned and Adam died. But flash forward... Fast forward thousands of years, and now in Christ what happens when a man sins? He does not die. He does not die. Why? He cannot die because Christ died once and he'll never die again. He lives forever and forever. And so when Christ is in you, it's not like the Old Testament. It's not like the Old Covenant. It's not like this way back. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm yelling. I'm getting excited about this. Last night I was studying this stuff. I've been studying this stuff for a lot of years, and God gave me a fresh revelation I've never seen before. I've read books called New Creation Realities. Never heard this, never been taught this. I'm like, what is this? Judy walked in. She said, honey, your eyes are like big as a saucer. I said, man, my mind is so far out there. My hands are shaking. I'm so excited about this. The first service, I got talking so fast. I had two people come up and say, Pastor, that was the greatest message I've ever heard you preach. But I felt like, ooh, I'm losing most of the people. So you have no idea. I'm going so fast, but I am holding back. I am really pulling back on the reins here and trying to help you understand what I'm talking about. Because when you understand this revelation, you see in the Old Testament, God said to Adam, the day that you eat of this tree, what's going to happen? You're going to die. Right? And something inside him, the God likeness, the authority, the image of God, not the physical. There's a lot of people, I mean, they're pretty amazing physical specimens. A lot of people are amazing uh, mental, you know, specimens and emotional specimens, you know. But when you're not in Christ, your spirit man's dead because it was capable of dying. But the Bible says if you're in Christ, Christ is in you, and Christ cannot die. Christ cannot die. In the Old Testament, when the man sinned, he had to run over and find a priest. He had to find some animal, slit his throat, drain the blood out, put it on a rock or on an altar, and say, God, please forgive my sins, and I don't want to pay for my sins with my own blood. So God, would you please take the blood of this poor animal and accept his blood in the place of mine? And God say, okay, I forgive you, but you're still dead. I'll forgive you, but you're still dead. You see, it's like taking a tire that's been blown out and you put a patch on it. It's not a new tire. You buy something out of the paper and they say, it's just like new. No, it's not like new. New is like new. You can get a little bottle of spray and put it on that thing and it smells like new. It's not new. It's like putting lipstick on a corpse. It may look alive. It's not alive. 
And so under the old covenant, the man sinned and the man died. And that's why Jesus came along thousands of years later and he said, you must be born again. Why? Because you're spiritually dead. But I'm not going to born again you. I'm going to turn it into a verb. I'm not going to birth you again like God did with Adam. When he took the dust of the earth and he formed him into a man and then he breathed the breath of life into him and he became a living soul. But then he warned him, the first time you sin, you're going to die on the inside. Have you ever felt like you're talking to somebody and you said something you shouldn't have said, you did something you shouldn't have done, and you feel just like you did physically, but on the inside something died? Well, magnify that a bazillion times, and that's what the death of Adam and Eve when they sinned was like. They died spiritually on the inside. But when Christ comes into you, he's the everlasting. See, he went into the tomb dead. He came out of the tomb alive, and he is, say it with me, alive forevermore, right? And so the old man, when he sinned, he had to run around and get forgiveness so that on the outside he would appear to be holy. On the outside, see, the, the temples, the sacrifices, all these things, they point to a right relationship with God, but they can't create one because you're just a dressed-up dead man. Laying there in the box, got your suit on, got your makeup on, but you're still dead on the inside. But in Christ, did you notice that when you sin, you don't die? When the old man sinned, he died. When the new man sins, you don't die because Christ can't die. Christ can't die. When you get born again and you sin, you might feel like, oh, I'm dead and I'm so far from God. You're not dead. You're just away from the Lord. That spirit man on the inside of you cannot die. You just need to feed it. Somebody said, well, I don't feel saved anymore. But you are saved. Somebody said, but I don't feel very close to God anymore. Well, you may not be very close, but you can get close because you're not dead. You're alive. You're just underfed. That's all. You see what we're saying? It's an entirely different creation. He recreated you. But not, I, you, I hate to use the, the word recreated because it sounds like he did the same thing he did before. He didn't do the same thing he did before. He did an entirely new thing. You are a fresh creation, the Greek literally says. You're a fresh creation. And the word there, if anybody's in Christ, he's a new creature, a new creation. The word there specifically refers to the act. Everybody say the act. The act of creation. In other words, if I went poof and I created that glass... I could say that act was the act of creation. Therefore, I have my creation. See, if anybody is in Christ, he's a new creation. No, no, no. That's not what it really says. It says there is a new creation that takes place. There's a new act of creating that takes place. And therefore, the creation exists. In other words, it says if anybody is in Christ, then a new act of creation has taken place. And therefore, that new creature exists. A new creation, a second creation, thousands of years after the first creation when God created Adam and Eve, very similar to that creation and yet very different from that creation. Now it is the same in this. It says, and all things are of God. If you've ever been to the Sistine Chapel or you've seen the pictures, you've seen the painting of Michelangelo where God created Adam. In that picture you see what seems to be a fully alive, cognizant, aware Adam and he's reaching up to God with his finger, and God's reaching down with his finger, and there's a spark in between. And that's supposed to be creation. That's baloney. That is not what happened at all. It appears from that painting as if man had a part in the act of creation, but he had no part in the act of creation. The Bible says God formed him from the dust of the earth, and then God breathed his life into him, and he became a living soul. And so it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if anybody's in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here, and all this is from God. All of this is from God. In other words, if you're a sinner lost in your sins, and how many of y'all used to be a sinner lost in your sins? Before I was saved, I was a sinner, and I was a great sinner. I was an A-plus sinner. I was sinning, sinning as hard and fast as I could go, 100 miles an hour. And never, never did it cross my mind if I could, not to my knowledge, if I could just stop it and if I could just be good enough, God would love me. No, somebody came to me in the middle of my sins and they said, Warren, Jesus loves you. Did you know that? Yeah, I was reading that. And, this, and Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Do you believe that? Yeah. 
I was reading that in the Bible. I didn't understand it, but I was, I was reading that. And, they said, and, and then Jesus rose from the dead. Do you believe that, Warren? Yeah, I believe that. I, I don't really know what it means or how that applies to me, but yeah, I believe that. And they said, see, Warren, that means you're going to be born again. And in fact, you might be born again already. Let's just go pray together and just make sure. Because that's how you get born again. You believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he took your sins, you've asked him to forgive you, he comes in your heart, and you become a new creature in Christ. So there I was with long hair, you know, in a, in a ponytail and a beard and drugs in my pockets and drugs in my veins. An absolutely brand new creature, an act of creation happened that was all of God and none of me. All of God and none of me. Brand new, born again. Dr. Gill says about this, and Dr. Gill's a brilliant man. He says they're a new creation. It's a phrase that's often applied by the Apostle Paul to people who are converted, to people that get saved. Somebody say, I'm saved. Amen. He's talking about you. And he says it's not talking about an outward change of life and lifestyle. It's talking about an inward principle of grace, favor, God's presence penetrating the very core of your being. And he says it's actually a creation work. See, I just figured this out, but Dr. Gill figured it out a long time ago. He said it's actually a creation work. And so he says, it's not man's work, it's God's work. And he says, in this work, man is purely passive as he was in the first creation. You see, you think, oh, well, I believed hard enough and I got saved. No, no, you just had simple faith and all you did was receive. My sons all played football, right, in high school. And one of them was a receiver. And so I don't know if I ever paid much attention to it. I was never a receiver myself. I was too little to play uh, football in, in, in high school. You know, I was the littlest guy in the school. And, and I made up for it by being real slow. So they didn't want me on the team. But I did wrestle. That was okay. I, you know, if the guy's right there, I don't have to try to catch him. Just got to grab him. You know, throw him down. Okay, so back to football. So receivers, though. All a receiver does is he's got to be at the right place at the right time. I mean, it all boils down to this. Be there at the right place at the right time, and you've got to have soft hands. And just, drink, just bring that, that ball in. That's all you've got to do as a receiver. I mean, hold on to it, because they're going to try to knock the snot out of you in about half a second. But you just got to receive. And so we receive Christ. It's not our work to get saved. He said, it's a passive thing, as in the first cre creation. And he says, and this is a new creature, a new man, in opposition to. Listen to that. In opposition to. In distinction from. Totally different from the old man. In other words, it's not a new improved version. I remember when I got saved, you know, and all of a sudden I'd gone from a really hateful, angry kind of a person, and I was just so full of love for everybody. Now I remember my mom coming through the, the house. I was 21 years old. I was still living at home because of all my sin. I'd lost my job and all this kind of stuff. Had no money. I was forced to live at home. My mom walks by and she pats me on the head. 21-year-old man, right? Pats me on the head and says, honey, you've just turned into such a good boy. And I, and I look back and I said, mama, I'm not a good boy. I got saved. I got saved. I'm a new creature is what I am. I got born again. And so he says here, you're a new man in opposition to the old man, distinct from the old man. That man had a corrupt nature. And he said, because it's something new that God has planted in your soul, which never was there before, it's not working on the old man. It's not improving the old man. It's an implantation, impartation of new principles of grace and holiness. He says, now you have a new heart. This is still Dr. Gill. Now you have a new heart. You have a new spirit. You have new light, new life, new affections, new desires, new delights, and new joys. You have new eyes to see with, new ears to hear with, new feet to walk with, new hands to work and act with. In other words, when you got born again, God didn't look at you as if you were new. He didn't look at you as if you were new. He created you new. He created you a new person. You were born again. He literally, seriously created the spark of God, the spirit man, Christ in you. St. Paul said in another place, he said, I go all over the world preaching the mystery of the gospel that's been hidden from ages and generations. What's the mystery, Paul? Christ is in you, and that's your hope of glory. Amen. Christ in you.
Do you still sin? Sure you do. But when you sin, you don't die. You don't just put lipstick on a pig or hairspray on a corpse or a patch on a blown out tire. It's a whole new man with a new heart. Does he fall? Yes, but he rises up. Does he still get into sin every now and then? Dear Lord, we still do. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we sin and confess our sins, what does it say? God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And notice the next phrase, and to cleanse us. Not to make us get born again again. We don't have to get born again again. Pastor, I sinned. You know, I got saved 20 years ago and I've been walking away like this, you know. And now I want to come back. I got to get born again again. No, you can't get born again again. You never died. You didn't die. You don't need to get born again again. You need to get cleaned up. He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Man, all of a sudden, all these scriptures make all kinds of sense. But especially that concept that Jesus, once he died, the Bible says he will never die again. He says in the book of Revelation, he says, I am he that is alive. I was dead, but now I'm alive forevermore. If you're a believer... I want you to take your hands, put them on your heart, and say, Christ is in me. Say, the life of Christ is in me. And Jesus will never die. And I will never die. Ooh-wee. 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 So when you feel weak, what do you do? Just feed that little baby. Feed that little spirit man. Feed it the Word of God. Get it back in church. Get it in prayer meetings. Get it in Bible studies, you know. Just feed it. You don't have to birth it again. Just feed it. Grow it. Grow it up. Amen. If anybody's in Christ, anybody here in Christ? then not only were you a new creature, I mean, I got saved January 15th, 1975. And I was a new creature on January, 5th, January 14th, 1975. I was an old man dead in my sins. January 15th, 1975, I was a new creature. But guess what? On February 18th, 2018, I am still a new creature. Fresh creation in Christ. Man, oh man, oh man. That's a powerful truth. Let's all stand together, please. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, all I can hear in my mind right now is, let's put our hands together. <laughs> Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we need you. More and more and more of you. We want to be closer to you. We want to walk in your strength and your power. And Lord, you said in your word that you created man to reign. To rule. And so thousands of years later, Lord, you said we reign in Christ. That we are more than conquerors. That we are overcomers. Because Christ the King is in us. And so, Father God, we just make a deal with you. We're not going to run around anymore saying life is hard and poor me. We're going to say, I'm an overcomer. I've been made in God's image, and I'm destined to rule and to reign. Lord, you made Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden. You equipped him and commanded him to rule. And in Christ, Father God, you've created us to rule. To be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. To be kings, to be priests, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Sons of God, God men, in your class, we thank you, Lord. We ask you, Lord God, to give us greater and greater revelation of that, Lord God. So we'd walk around with our head held high, not in pride, but Lord, in association with you. Because we're children of God. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. 
Jesus, you said the least of us is great in your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord God, that's your word, not ours. And I pray for a greater and greater revelation, Lord God, wisdom to see who you've created us to be, Lord. We look in the mirror, we don't just see a certain number of inches or a certain number of pounds or a certain color of skin or hair, but we see Christ in the name of Jesus. You said that we're a sweet savor of you everywhere we go because you're in us, Lord. Out of our bellies flow rivers of living water because you're in us, Lord. Help us to see that more and more every day. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. I'm growing in revelation. My eyes are opening up. And I'm seeing who I am. How you've made me. What I can do. What I'm becoming. Through your power. For your service. For your kingdom. For your glory. Thank you, Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you came today and, and uh, you, you know, you've been saved, but you're far away from God. You know you are. Nobody has convinced you. Your own heart tells you. Why don't you come back today? You don't need to get born again again. Just come on back to the Lord and, and get all that unrighteousness cleansed. And then start to feed that man on the inside of you. Feed him some strong meat, the Word of God. Hang around good people that will help you. Or maybe you've come today and you've never even been born again. Maybe nobody explained it in a way that you understood before. You've been to church a hundred times. It never made sense. But today it made sense. And you want to be born again. If that's you, would you do me a favor and do me the honor of allowing me just to pray with you a real quick prayer? Just like somebody did for me 40 years ago. All I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to ask you to come down front. I just want you to raise your hand up as high as you can, long enough for me to see it. And by that hand say, make me a Christian. Make me a a, a believer. I want to be a believer, a Christian. Yes, I see that hand right there, sir. I see that hand right there, ma'am. The Bible, the, last week's message was about the angels. You know what it says about angels? It says, all the angels of heaven rejoice when one person gives their heart to Christ. Amen. Right now, two people raise their hand and all the angels of God are rejoicing in heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm just rejoicing with them. Amen. And if you raise your hand, in fact, the ushers have a little packet. Just go ahead and give that to them. And, and on that packet, uh, y'all, ma'am and sir, there's a little card. And if you'd please fill that out and give that back to the usher, we'd appreciate that. The little packet will help you. It's got a little DVD in it, a little uh, certificate for a free Bible if you don't have one, uh, just some opportunities to, for classes and things. We want to help you grow in the Lord. And then if you'll fill out that card and hand it right back to that usher, then we're going to send you a little thing in the mail, and, and you'll be glad we did that too. How many of y'all learned something today? I hope you did. I know you did. I know you did. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Man, I hope you walk around this week just feeling not fully yourself ever, but full of Christ. Full of Christ. Can you imagine Jesus walking around shuffling his feet? Oh, I'm having a bad day. Poor me. It's hard being the Son of God. Everybody hates me. Life's hard. Demons are always attacking me. Messing up my services. No, man, he was the Lion of Judah. Right? And that's who he is in you. Woo, the more you yield to him, the more you become like him. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. Y'all sit down, I'll preach again. No, I'm just joking. Don't do it. All right, stand up. Let me bless you before you go. You know, we didn't say that prayer, though. If you're far away from the Lord, you want to come back to him right now. Just take a step, a decision. Make a decision. That right now I'm going to come back to the Lord and give my life to Him. And it won't be like last time. I'm going to really do it all the, all the way. All the way. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand up too. If the, oh, a bunch of y'all. bunch of y'all. Praise the Lord. Let's just all pray. Let's just all pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we just pray for all these that have their hands raised. That, Father God, that fresh spark, that fresh wind, that fresh hope, that fresh joy and expectation would come into their hearts, Lord God. And they would begin to know that they know that they know that they're on the right path. And this is it. This is it. This is the day that they're like the prodigal son. They're coming back and they're going to live with the Father the rest of their life and enjoy the blessings. 
In Jesus' name, strengthen them. Forgive them, Lord God. Wash them free. Wash them clean from their sins. Wash them, wash them, wash them. In the name of Jesus, wash them free. Clean and free, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And restore to them that glory. Restore that joy. Restore that peace. Restore that happiness and, and just confidence into them, Lord. Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We believe that. Hey, before I let you go, I'm going to bless you in a second. Before I let you go, please don't forget that uh, uh, Dr. Savelle will be here next week. So uh, take your cards. You'll get some in the mail probably. Uh, grab some today. And even if you just lay it down on the table when you eat lunch, just but give it to somebody. Pray about it. Give it to somebody. Invite people because this could really change their life. It could really be a watershed time for their life. And then also, as soon as service is over, we're going to dismiss out of here, and we're going to have a great time. We're going to do a wedding. It's a very special wedding. We have so many testimonies here. We had a family that came about three weeks ago, and their life was just really on the rocks. I mean, everything was going wrong. The husband had lost his job. The, the, the two of them were fighting. They were just about to walk away from each other. Everything was going wrong. He got saved. Uh, they've been coming to Bible studies. We've been praying with them. We've been working with them. Uh, he got a new job, better than the job he had before. And he asked his fiance if she'd marry him. She is excited. The family's here from Mexico. We're going to do a, a, a wedding right after service. And if you want to come, we'd love to have you come um, and just celebrate with us. It's going to be a great time. How many of y'all are excited about that? Isn't that great? God's so good. God is so good. God's so good. All right, lift your hands up and let me let you go. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. I declare and send a blessing over your life. A blessing of peace. A blessing of joy. A blessing of, of prosperity. And favor and health. And long life and wisdom. and Just every kind of blessing from God be upon you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I love you guys so much. God bless you. Thank you.